able to become a reality where it would not for the munificence of Ratna Sabhapati governor and his family who gave him the land in Kamachin Bodh to set up the Udupaya Mashram from which Rajaji launched forth in his ideational, ideological and political genius. What Ambala Sarabhai was to practice. Ratna Sadhapati called their family, Kudukoti, Dhamma Kirchengu was to practice. No Ratna Sadhapati called their family, Ratna Sadhapati called their family, and that family, and no family. That background pretty much digression over. Do you want to hear what they have to say about Dr. Sudhakar? So I, I was born in Chennai, but at a very young age, I got whisked away to Delhi, where neither my grandmother nor my aunts nor my father bothered to tell me about Dr. Sudhakar. So it's only when I actually came back to Chennai and when I started a political career and sort of ventured into places like in Chungodo or Salem that I started to hear little rumblings about who Dr. Subrayan was and what he managed to do. Now I'm not sure why my family didn't bother to tell me much about him. Maybe he was, you know, to prepare any sort of arrogance or max history or a self-imposed burden of expectations, if you will. But regardless, to me what stands out for Dr. Subrayan isn't the various positions he held, the list for which would be a mile long, but the manner in which he actually conducted himself, the way he lived his life the courage of his convictions, the moral courage he showed in making unpopular decisions which today I see lacking in most of our political class. And by that I mean he did his best for the downtrodden throughout his entire life. Uh, I would say that he, he was the first one to pioneer the temple entrance with the Dalits. He did his best to bring reservation and jobs for the downtrodden. And even back in the day, he opposed people within his own community to actually marry outside his caste. So all these things in those days were fairly controversial. And the way Dr. Subrayan conducted his life and the things he did are, you know, goes to show how much, what kind of courage of convictions he actually had. And that's one of the things that I take away from his life over and above the positions he held. If you look at many politicians today, or the large the political class who tries to give their uh, descendants, if you will, a soft landing in terms of trying to set up a particular seat for them, encouraging them to come into the political realm while they are still in power. But the interesting thing about Dr. Subrayan was that he actually opposed his children, or rather I would say his children opposed him, whether it was my grandfather who he stood against him in the election, or whether it was in fact uh, him campaigning against his own daughter while he was in the Congress party. He showed this, this ideological firmness that I think he lacked in. You know, my, uh, my wife actually, I, I was a professional all the way to 2011 when I decided to quit the path of life that I was on and come into politics. And my wife often jokes and says that you've been in a seven year job interview, you're not elected to any office yet. And when you will get elected, that's exactly when you start a job interview. You wonder how you're going to do in the job when you get it. 